I played Harry Rowe Jr. in the script, and he was, uh, he's a monster. He's a sadistic, drug-ridden uh, psychopath. We started casting, and I had the idea of, of, of Alan Arkin, because he, he's such a meanie when he wants to be. He, can, he, he plays a great villain. And he had three villains to play, so he, he played three different parts and changed his makeup for each one and was terrific in each one, scared the heck out of you. You want something? You, Mr. Talman. And you too, Sergeant Carlino. I want you too. I think playing a heavy is, is liberating if you have a lot of rage and negativity in you that you want to expiate and are afraid to do in your, in your own life. I have my problems, like everybody does, but I don't think that's one of them. It wasn't liberating for me. In fact, I don't think anybody was terribly happy with what I was doing for a long time. I had a plan for this guy, and that was that he gets unleashed the first time he, uh, he pulls a knife on somebody, which was weeks into the shooting of the film. I was playing him as what, what looked like him being a kind of a laid back guy, but it wasn't laid back, like a snake being laid back. It's just waiting for an opportunity. Once upon a time, there was a fairy princess named Lisa. He was on every conceivable drug known to man, and they were all kind of counteracting each other, so he was in a state of negative neutrality. Oh, man, you're a charmer. I remember that for like two minutes after I pulled the knife for the first time in the script, everybody breathed a sigh of relief, and everybody said, oh, yeah, okay, we see what he's doing now. It starts to make sense. Oh, my fat man, over there, now both of you through the door backwards. Most of all, I hated terrorizing Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> Down we go. I was nuts about her. I was crazy about her. That whatever you, one has heard about her, whatever her uh, screen persona appears to be, that's what she was like. I just thought I'd call to tell you I was the best in blind school today. That's my girl. I really truly was, cross my heart. I thought that Audrey couldn't always play the young, slightly gaga, wide-eyed ingenue. So I thought if she played something as demanding and as difficult as a blind woman who was terrorized by three real, real monsters and who finds a way to save herself and turn the tables on the worst one of the three, I thought that was establish her as a, as a pretty good actress. Do I have to be the world's champion blind lady? Yes. Audrey was never happy with her performance in any film. She always thought she could do better. She wanted to improve all the time, and she always said, I've got big feet, I've got a big nose. She always saw things that, that worried her. I'm not a very good blind lady, Gloria, and I'm still not used to all this dark brown. I get cranky and impatient, and oh, I know I look dreadful half the time. Oh, no, you're gorgeous. What a lovely thing to say. Audrey always lacked a lot of confidence. She didn't seem to be that way in her performance. And I couldn't always keep going and saying, now that's, that was great. I, I felt that was not something I should do. I stayed out of it and just stood there in the background waiting for disaster to strike any day, and it never did. What did she say? I told you she just left a message. Dick Crenna was a very warm, personable, attractive guy and he was playing one of the three crooks which was a good switch for him that's why i liked the idea of doing it sorry to trouble you mrs hendricks I'm afraid this is going to be one of those days i had a good time with jack weston carlino here weston was very improvisatory i'm only really happy when i'm getting spontaneous feedback from somebody else and jack weston was able to do that uh you're a lovely cavalier only don't tell sam you helped me I'm supposed to be learning total self-sufficiency. What we based really Audrey's performance on was the way blind people conditioned themselves to live in the world. She didn't want to wear a, a lens or something on it to make her eye look cloudy or anything like that. She just did it by, by looking a little bit starry-eyed. What are you going to do with 
Gasly. Well, you just guessed. I called up Jack Warner one day and said, uh, we'd like to show you the, the rough cut of the picture. So we went down to this projection room, which is, you know, like Grauman's Chinese, and uh, there was Jack sitting all by himself. He says, Jesus, you guys are right on time. That's great, let's go. So we get to the big scene where Alan Arkin jumps out and grabs Audrey's ankle, and Jack jumps up out of his seat, turns to me and he goes, I did interviews at a couple of screenings of the movie, and I hear this scream from like a thousand people, and it scared the hell out of me. I said, God, what's that? And he said, it's you. <laughs> Apparently that went on at every screening of the film for months, and that at that moment, the audiences just went berserk. Oh, God! I think, by and large, the American public had not been exposed to that kind of people. And I don't think the reviewers had, so that they felt initially that what I was doing was a little bit bizarre. Uh, but but the, the attention I got from the film escalated as the years went by and people started having people like that live next to them uh, or see them in the newspapers or on television more so that it didn't seem as far out as it was initially when I did it. I, I don't really know why the film is so effective today. I do know that the more you show people, the less work they have to do. And part of theatrical experience is what you bring to it. We're not encouraged to bring anything to an experience anymore. If you're watching a scene where somebody's getting beat up behind a couch and you can't see it very well, uh, then your mind goes to all your own personal nightmares, what, that could, what could be going on there that you can't stand to see. And that feeds your own emotional life. But if you're seeing every graphic moment of it, then it lets the audience off the hook. So they're not, they're not sharing in the experience of what's going on. They're not contributing anything to it. Pick up the cane. And tap on the floor right where you are so I know where you are. Go up, tap. She okay. was witty, she was enormously hard worker, and incredibly game. Secretly, I wanted to be like her. I wanted to be able to have that kind of joy and ease on the set. I felt like I was working with real royalty, but in the most beautiful possible way. I'm very proud of the picture, and I'm very proud of Audrey, and I think she does a beautiful job. In fact, all the actors are good, but Audrey is just that little bit better. Yeah. <laughs>